Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today, I have another very simple keto meal recipe for you. Today, we're going to learn how to make simple keto French toast sticks. This recipe is quick, easy, and of course, delicious. So if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at JanetsDeliciousLowCarbKitchen.com. You can find a printable version of these recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat a large skillet over medium heat. In a large mixing bowl, combine 75 grams or about 10 tablespoons of coconut flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, a fourth teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon. The ground cinnamon is optional. I like a little bit of a cinnamon flavor in the bread of my French toast sticks, but if you don't want the cinnamon, you can leave that out. Whisk or sift these all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add three large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature so they stir in smoothly. Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients have been lightly moistened. Add one fourth cup of melted butter or the oil of your choice. Stir the oil into the other ingredients until everything is fully combined. Add one fourth cup of room temperature plain Greek yogurt or sour cream. Stir everything all together until everything is fully combined and you have a moist, smooth dough. Form the dough into a ball and massage the dough for about one minute so that it can absorb any extra moisture. The dough will be very moist, but it should not be sticky. If it is sticking to your hands at all, then just add a very small amount more of coconut flour. Be careful not to add too much because you don't want to have dry French toast sticks. After you've massaged the dough for a minute, line a clean work surface with parchment paper. Then press or roll the dough into a rectangle that is about a half inch thick or your desired thickness. However thick you think you're going to want your French toast sticks to be, that would be the thickness that you would roll your dough out to. Make sure if you use a rolling pin that you cover the dough with parchment paper when you roll it out because the dough will stick to your rolling pin if you do not have the parchment paper covering it. Once your dough is all rolled out to your desired thickness, cut the dough into your desired size sticks. I do mine about one inch wide. It's up to you how big you think you're going to want your French toast sticks. Make sure when you cut these that you cut all the way through the parchment paper. You want to keep the parchment paper attached to the underside of each one of the French toast sticks. This will help to support the dough when you go to put it into your skillet. Once your sticks are cut into your desired size, generously spray your preheated skillet with cooking spray or you can grease it with some oil or melted butter. Then carefully place your sticks into your preheated skillet. You do this by carefully grasping the sides of the parchment paper that's underneath your strips. Then carefully turn it over onto your preheated skillet and remove the paper from the back side. Keep your sticks in a single layer and space them a little bit apart. This makes it a little bit easier when you turn them. Cover the skillet and cook for about one to two minutes or until the sticks release easily from the pan and are lightly brown on the underside. Once they're browned on the underside, uncover the skillet Turn the sticks over, cover the skillet back up, and cook for another one minute or until the sticks are lightly browned on both sides. Once they're done cooking, place the sticks onto a lined paper plate and again generously spray your skillet and repeat the cooking process until all the sticks have been cooked. Once your sticks have all been cooked, Set them aside for a few minutes just to cool a little bit so you don't burn your fingers when you go to coat them. While they're cooling a little bit, 
Place two tablespoons of butter in a large skillet and preheat it over medium heat until the butter is completely melted. While the skillet is preheating and the butter is melting, in a wide bowl or a deep plate, combine two large eggs and two tablespoons of the milk of your choice. Use a fork and stir the eggs and the milk together until they're fully combined. In a separate wide bowl or deep plate, combine one fourth cup of granulated sweetener of your choice and one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Then take your sticks one at a time and place them into the egg milk mixture. Then turn the stick to coat it completely with the egg and the milk mixture and allow any excess of the mixture to drain off into the bowl. Then place the coated stick into your sweetener mixture and again turn the stick to fully coat it with the sweetener mixture. Then place the coated stick into your preheated skillet with the melted butter. Repeat the coating process until all of your sticks have been coated and are placed in your skillet. Again, make sure your sticks are in a single layer and slightly spaced apart. Cook over medium heat for about one to two minutes or until the underside of the stick is browned. Then turn the stick over and cook another one to two minutes or until both sides of the stick have been browned. Once the sticks have all been cooked, place them on the serving platter of your choice. Serve them warm with some keto syrup. I'm using my keto syrup recipe. I'll leave a link in the description. If you don't want to make your own keto syrup, Chalk Zero makes some really good different flavors of keto syrup. If you do have any leftovers, let them cool completely and you can store them in an airtight container for up to two days in your refrigerator. And then when you're ready to use them, you can just put them on a plate, microwave them on a high for about 20, 30 seconds or just until they're warm. Or you can put them in your oven at around 350 degrees for about three to five minutes or just until they're heated all the way through. Eat and enjoy. And that's our best recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.